This week, Cat Person by Kristen Rupinian has been a popular topic of conversation online. It trended on Twitter, it inspired reviews and think pieces in the New York Times, the Washington Post, Huffington Post, and other prominent outlets. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you haven't read it, it's available to read for free on the New Yorker's website. There's a link in the description of this video. I encourage you to go read it, not only because what I'm about to say in this video will make a lot more sense once you have, but also because it's just good. So go give it a read. I'll wait. On second thought, I don't feel like waiting, so go ahead and pause this video, go read it, and then come back when you're done, okay? Sweet. Now that we've all read the story, and yes, there are spoilers coming up, so fair warning to those of you who still haven't read it, I want to discuss why it's become such a hot topic of conversation this week. Why did Cat Person go viral? Because it's pretty unusual for this much attention to be lavished on a piece of short fiction, however accomplished or timely. There are two fundamental things Cat Person has going for it that I think account for it blowing up the way it has. First, and most essentially, it's a damn fine piece of writing. As I said earlier, it's just good. It's well paced, its voice is clear and confident, and it's accessible. You don't have to have an MFA to appreciate it, nor is it pandering and lowbrow and middle of the road. It's just right. Second, it's about something many of its readers can relate to on a personal level. A mark of good writing is the ability to present a particular experience that is unique to the lives of its characters, but which its readers can relate to their own lives. We find the universal in the specific. Even though we may not have had the exact same experience as the characters in the story, we can relate to it because we have had similar experiences, or failing that, we have felt similar feelings. And the things that Margot, the protagonist of Cat Person, experiences, the feelings she feels, are extremely familiar to many readers of the story, particularly women. Margot meets Robert at the movie theater where she works. They strike up a flirtation over text messages, which leads to a date. The date does not go well for Margot. Afterwards, she struggles with how to tell Robert that she's not interested in seeing him anymore. When Robert eventually learns that Margot doesn't want to see him anymore, he at first seems to handle it with dignity and understanding. But after seeing Margot out with some friends in a bar a few weeks later, Robert begins to send her an increasingly aggressive series of texts, culminating in a demand that she answer him, followed by a final message where he calls her a whore. That's the plot, such as it is, but the heart of the story lies in Rupinian's depiction of Margot's internal struggle to navigate these events. While Robert ends the story bitterly attacking Margot for rejecting him, we have witnessed how, at every point leading up to that attack, Margot has agonized over how to avoid hurting him. Even after she realizes that things aren't going to work out between them, that she isn't as interested in him as she initially thought she was, she remains preoccupied with his comfort, his happiness. And that's not because she's just that sweet and selfless that she can't bear the thought of hurting another person's feelings. One of the great strengths of the story is that Margot, while always remaining sympathetic, is written as a flawed human being, not a virtuous archetype. She comes across as an essentially good, well-meaning person, but she also makes sure to note several times that Robert is a little on the heavy side, and at one point she briefly indulges in a fantasy about how excited a man like Robert must be to get to have sex with a beautiful young woman like her. Not the most flattering look for a character. But there are also times where she is genuinely attracted to Robert, or at least intrigued by him. She agrees to go out with him in the first place, not because she intends to use him and dispose of him, but because she really likes him. And even though there is an element of selfish motivation behind some of the decisions she makes in the story, there is also continuously a sincere wish on her behalf not to unnecessarily hurt him. 
these thoughts and feelings experienced by Margot ring very true for many women who have read this story. Also linked in the description of this video are an interview with the author, Kristen Rupinian, as well as one of the many essays written in response to the story in an attempt to explain why it means so much to so many people. In both pieces, there is discussion of the ongoing, exhausting emotional labor that women take on during interactions with men. If you're a man who has never experienced this firsthand, or even given it much thought, it might be eye-opening to you to read women describing how strenuous and perilous these interactions can feel when we take them for granted. And, as Cat Person shows us in a subtle but powerfully convincing way, Perilous is the word we ought to use in many of these circumstances. Margot spends much of the story worried about relatively trivial things, not wanting to make things awkward between her and Robert, not wanting to start an argument, wanting to maintain as much of her own comfort as possible while keeping Robert happy. But there are also moments where Margot ponders whether Robert might be planning to kill her. She plays these thoughts off as absurd, but Rupinian makes sure to show us enough that we know Margot's fears are not as silly as she attempts to convince herself that they are. Robert is larger and older than she, and he lives in a house that is far outside of town. When they arrive at his place, she is essentially at his mercy. She is trusting her life to this person that she hardly knows on the assumption that he doesn't mean her any harm. This, too, is something many readers recognized from their own lives. For many women, like Margot, being alone with a man, especially when they are on the man's home turf, is an act of faith. For men like me, who have never had a similar experience, it helps to explain why Margot spends so much of the story trying to figure out what Robert is thinking. It's not just because she wants to avoid putting her foot in her mouth or prevent uncomfortable lulls in their conversation. It's self-defense. My wife has sometimes said to me in frustration, I can't read your mind. And my response is usually some variation of, I can't read your mind either. That's why I don't try. I've always found that a rather neat rebuttal, sort of my way of saying, stop trying to guess what I'm thinking and just take me at face value. That's what I do for you. Why can't you do the same for me? The factor I usually fail to consider is that I'm six foot one and weigh nearly 200 pounds. Now, that doesn't make me a giant by any means, but it does make me significantly larger than my wife. In fact, with few exceptions, I'm larger than all the women I've dated. I've never been violent with any of my partners. I've never threatened them. I've never given them any reason, as far as I can tell, to regard me as a danger to their safety. But I'm not usually conscious of the difference in our sizes or of how intimidating that size disparity can be in and of itself. Why does Margot spend so much time in cat person trying to guess what Robert is thinking? Why does my wife wish that she could read my mind? Perhaps in part it's because they want to be able to assure themselves that the man that they are on a date with, in a car with, sleeping with, living with, isn't going to hurt them. So many people see themselves in Margot, and in some cases, I suspect that identification is uncomfortably close. The flurry of petulant, abusive texts Robert sends her at the end of the story reads almost exactly like countless real-life text exchanges received by friends of mine from aggrieved men who felt they were entitled to more than they got. How many women read this story and felt not that they had had a similar experience to Margot's, but that they had had that exact experience. But it's more than that. It also resonates with people like me who have never been in Margot's place. It achieves something good art often achieves. It shows me an experience I've never had, but allows me to walk away feeling as though I understand it. I don't, not really, but I at least have an additional level of insight into that experience that I didn't have before. And it reminds me, in an artful, eloquent way, of the importance of continuing to pursue that understanding by listening to women who have had experiences like the one Margot has and have chosen to share. 
Yesterday, the President of the United States tweeted about Kirsten Gillibrand, a woman and a United States Senator who has called for his resignation in light of the numerous credible allegations of sexual harassment and abuse that have been made against him. Trump claimed that Gillibrand used to beg him for campaign contributions and seemed to imply that she had offered sexual favors in exchange. Think about how often men, powerful men and ordinary men, react to women who embarrass, challenge, or reject them by denigrating them through their sexuality. Margot decides not to go out on a second date with Robert, and Robert calls her a whore. Senator Gillibrand demands that an abuser and harasser of women be held accountable for his actions, and she is all but called a whore as well. Why did Cat Person go viral? Because it's good, and because it came to us at the moment when we needed it the most. It does what so many works of art that attain not only critical praise, but cultural currency do. It shows us who we are. For many women who read the story, they see themselves reflected in Margot. For many men who read the story, we get through Margot a glimpse at the internal worlds of the women in our lives. And we men get something else too. We get Robert. Robert, who goes from inscrutable to charming, to awkward, to sympathetic, to pathetic, and finally to toxic. We get to take a good hard look at him and see how much of ourselves we can recognize. Like I said, good art shows us who we are. Doesn't mean we'll like what we see.